Hello everybody, my name is Erika and in today's stream we will be continuing the rigging of the turnaround character helmet. If you want, you can follow along this uh, tutorial uh, by downloading the file from the previous stream. I'll also be posting a new file when we end today's stream. Last time we rigged half of uh, a helmet's face and body. And uh, today we are going to finish the other half of a uh, helmet, so this side here, uh, trying to uh, duplicate what we can duplicate, and we'll add new controls. Um, I also plan to add a face control so that we can move the face uh, in a 3D-ish way, uh, since it is uh, um, something that the animator will later require to achieve some of the poses in the um, sketches that he sent me. Uh, this art is by uh, Natalia and Sinisha. So last time we saw how to uh, position a bone uh, precisely where we want it. Now let's say that we want to place our bones on the other side of this creature, perfectly on the opposite side. We'll see how to place a bone from scratch and uh, how to mirror parts of our skeleton that we already created in this case. So let's start from something easy, which is this eye. Um, instead of uh, duplicating these, I'm going to create some brand new bones and mimic the positions of these uh, already created bones so that they will look the same, but they won't actually be the same. So I select the create, tool here and then I press uh, control like I did last time and I select the images that I want to have parented to this other eye. So I'll first start by uh, creating the bone wherever I want it. For example, I'll create one here. Now it ended up being parented to this eye because this is the uh, eye that I chose, the bone that I chose as parent. But I'll reparent it by pressing P, so it sets at parent P, and choosing the uh, face instead. This way it has the same color, it has the wrong icon, so I'll pick a better icon. And then because I want this uh, um, bone to be placed exactly where this is, but in a mirror position, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose the translate tool. I'm going to compensate bones and images because I don't want the images to move. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm Ctrl C so that I copy the bone transforms as you see from the text here. And then I select uh, the, this bone that I want to mimic the position of and press Ctrl V. Okay, in that case, it also made the uh, images follow despite the compensation. Well, in, in that case, let's just remove these images for now and uh, proceed by pasting the position so that it's exactly the same. And then to mirror it, what we are going to do is uh, to remove uh, the minus that we had here. So this relies on the fact that our character is uh, placed um, to be symmetrical exactly here in the middle. So that lets me achieve uh, this effect. Now, if I want to create a um, copy of the other bone, I'm going to do exactly the same with our eye. Uh, for the sake of this, yeah, I'm going to first select the image so that I don't have to manually name it. So I select this bone, then this uh, image. Then I'm going to uh, create this new bone and change its icon so like this and then i'm going to temporarily remove this uh, image here and i'm going to also copy the position of this bone here by pressing ctrl c and pasting it here and then i remove the minus again so it's perfectly placed now i can finally reparent all the proper images in the correct places now i'm going to select all of these slots the I slots and parent them to the I white slot. Then I want specifically the I slot to be parented to all I. Now I'm going to do the same for the cheeks here. Let me select the cheek here, 
let's uh, create i select the head then i select the cheek so i don't have the, to name this uh, bone because i don't really care if it gets messed up i'm placing it here i'm removing this in from the this bone so that i can move this freely now i copy this and i select i press ctrl v and then i remove the minus again it's very mechanical if you remember uh, this ear here had some additional space uh let's look at it in isolate mode uh, let's pretend that i'm doing a new one so you see it had this bit of extra space which prevents me from duplicating this mesh which is honestly a pity so it will mean that i want i'll have to redo this quickly i guess i'll edit this mesh and make a brand new mesh for this one if you remember this is again a tubular mesh so i'm going to place some vertices here it's bound to not be identical to the other uh, mesh that i created because um i don't have it under my eyes now if i wanted to have this mesh always visible i could check wireframe to help me did i rotate it again no okay yes i did rotate it okay uh so cool that i didn't deactivate that uh now i'm in isolate mode and i can still see the structure of this other uh, mesh here because i activated the wireframe option in it uh, and I'm going to quickly create the um, missing vertices. I'm going to add some vertices. I'm trying to place them and at roughly the same height. Perhaps I'm going to help myself using the rulers just to see. Like here, it's at 740, so that that's the same height. Okay. Uh, so I want to duplicate these two bones and there's also the ear so i'm going to duplicate them like this and rename them oh nice and uh, the copy of this ear um is a mess because it's parented to the head so it's not following them uh, perfectly but we can just delete this since we don't actually need it and then i want these to uh be mirrored so an easy way to do this is this one. I'll temporarily scale this to minus one. Oh, that's the wrong minus one. So I have to scale it like this so that it mirrors. Uh, I teach you all the tricks to be as lazy as possible and get it as perfect as possible. Now you see, now it has the correct position. I could have done this from the start and I didn't think about it. So I copy this. Then I undo what I just did and I paste it, bang, and it's nice and perfect. I guess I'm going to reuse this actually for the other parts as well. Now I'm going to open the weights panel and bind this here to the two bones and to the head. So now I'm going to use these as a visual guide for the head weights. So now I'm going to raise the influence of the head here so that it mimics uh, the same weights. Now if we want to uh, have a very precise uh, replica of the weights here, I could even copy and paste the weights for every single vertex. But life is too short for that, so I'll try to mimic them by hand. Now if you remember my tutorial on how to weight meshes, I explained that starting from the bones that have the that are the parents is the best way to weight uh, mesh. Let's test this. Almost. Let's test this one. Yeah, this is smoother. So let's try to mimic the same position here. Yeah, it still needs a bit more influence from the head here to get that nice nice cutie little movement here testing in the opposite direction and i'm dissatisfied with this that's because uh the automatic weighting uh, uh, 
didn't do wonders in this case so let me fix that so that it looks good so i'm going to deactivate the, the wireframe now because i want to look oh i also okay so they look a bit more similar now cool so if i do this okay here it's smooth here it's not so smooth so let's fix that it means that this phone may, needs a bit more in this case a bit less influence here because it's too strong so we are recreating a nice cure okay so this is the maximum that we can get this is how it's gonna go so this requires a bit less influence from here what we are missing ah yeah the we are going to do the other arm here now this time i'm going to do what uh finder su suggested and i'm going to duplicate this whole structure flip it and replace the images instead but first i will need to rig this arm so i'm going to create a mesh i'm going to create a new mesh we don't like old meshes then i'm going to create a straight line that follows this nice paw here and another one here so that it's as close as it can get but not too close and i'm going to create a couple of vertices here because that's where we want it to match the um, t-shirt sleeve and uh, i'm going to also create one here because we don't really want this bow well maybe yes to distort too much so i'm going to create several vertices now i guess the paws are gonna be very expressive so i'm not um holding back on undoing vertices here because this part is pretty important Perhaps I'll add more later, I'm not sure. And now I'm going to um, parent them to the two, uh, parent this mesh to the two bones. I'll bind it here. This two should be enough. Now let's check by doing this. Uh, I guess this is the kind of character that is going to have more noodly arms rather than uh, the, the very rigid arms. I actually want this to, to be smoother too. Okay. So here I have a very smooth and cute paw. So exactly what I did before, straight line here, follow the curve here, straight line again, angle, and I close it. And then I add the little um, vertices on each side so that this can become a cubular meshes, mesh. So I created two vertices, one at a side and one on the other side of this image. But I guess I'll try to also split it in the middle uh, because I wanted to avoid uh, some ugly artifacts on this little spot here. Not that it's that important, but it's always good to follow the drawing. So, I don't know, perhaps I'll add more, or perhaps not. Hmm. Yeah, I can add them. Oops. <laughs> because after, we are going to use this for videos. So, it shouldn't be a terrible thing to add some more vertices. So, we have 26 vertices in this case now i want to copy this setup 
and flip it. So here I have the IK target. I'm going to parn it so that it follows these legs here. And I'm going to I'm going to just duplicate this. And I'm going to uh, flip the whole body just like I did earlier. Because that was really convenient. Uh, so instead of having these uh, these parts called our leg down, etc., with the two, I'm going to use the renaming tool, and I'm going to tell it to find everything that it begins with an R. And I'm going to use regular expressions because that's also pretty convenient, so I can replace both at once. I want the current selection. And uh, I'm going to tell it, you have to uh, find everything that starts with an R and then select everything in between and everything that starts with a 2. And the uh, Clippy screams at me because I've been going for an hour. But seriously. And I'm going to replace it with L. And then I add the selection group. Oh my dear, okay. <laughs> I was pressing the wrong button. And I close this selection group and I leave it with nothing. So for some reason it is not working. Ah, yeah, <laughs> I used it wrongly. Uh, so here I have to create the selection group and then I can just use the dollar sign. So I remove the parentheses. So small. Uh, three selections. Oh, sorry, I'm now going to... Ah, oh, that word was wrong. I thought I had selected three selections. Thank you, Nate. Scope is wrong, thanks. <laughs> I, I I was like, oh, but I'm sure I, I did click there. I didn't. Um, for elastic bending, you need to use more points, which I guess you mean vertices, on the band and less on the rest. Am I right? You are damn right. Um... If you have them equally spaced along the whole mesh, then you can get a good noodly effect. But if you want to have a focus point like our um, human limbs, then you just want to concentrate them in the points uh, where it actually is bending. Very well, you have started. And I'm going to replace that. Fantastic. I wish we had a way to save some of these formulas so that I can just choose the one I want and reuse it. And in any way, I'm going to flip the root in this case. So I'm going to set the scale here to minus one. So it's flipped. Now I'm going to copy this bone. Uh, I'll leg. And bone transform copied. Remember to be in world axis to get the same result. Now I'm going to go back and i'm going to paste this and voila now this ended up being like it's not precise why are you not precisely placed you terrible terrible bone so because this is not precisely placed i'm going to type in a zero manually and i'm going to parent out leg here instead it's not the same color so they are not actually the same images i can't flip them no worries that's actually very fast to redo so i'm going to do it very speedy speedily very fast erica makes up words in english so i remember i did these and then these and then these because i wanted to Save the little paws of this little doggy. Then I'm going to add one, two, and then I don't remember if I have to add more. I remember I did that earlier. Maybe one here. This needs to. No, that one is excessive. We don't need that many. But we sure can enjoy this. Oh, let's check. Is it the same? Vaguely. Well, it's close enough. Rigging both should be a breeze. So I'm going to bind these here. 
and I'm going to bind at the same time. Why do I keep rotating that? Um, also these two here. And then I go with animate mode and rotate them. Ah, oh, such cute little pots. I can select here the various vertices. I can actually select them from here where they are straight and easier to select and then switch to animate mode because they'll stay selected and I'll smooth. Smooth is my favorite button. Like update bindings is my sacred and favorite one, but smooth is really one can't live without it. I'm going to also do the same on the other side here and smooth like there's no tomorrow. I'm going to edit this mesh here um, and attract it more to the bar border. And now I can create. Oh, that's a dangerous move that I did because I was in deformed mode. I want to already see it deformed and not undeformed, otherwise, it's going to deform the mesh, um, the drawing inside which I don't want. Well, because I blabbered about this, I'm going to show you what I mean. So if I do this here like this and then check deformed, this is the result. You see it deformed the mesh. Uh, it's probably easier to see if I do something like that here. So I do this, then I check deformed, then this is the result, okay? So let me undo this. I make sure to be in deformed and then I modify my uh, vertices position, my vertex position to create here and add a couple more vertices. Done! And now if I go in animate mode, it's much cuter and smoother and sweet and lovely. And... Uh, all right, we are done with the legs. That was actually easy, wasn't it? Um, Next, since we have an arm, we're going to replicate the structure on the opposite side. And then we're going to work on the face rig. How about that? I'm going to select the arm holder. And I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to duplicate it like this. I'm going to duplicate the keys. Maybe yes. Uh, and I'm going to use the same Holder target, arm down, arm, arm holder, arm holder. Okay, so here I have a lot to rename, but not these. And I'm going to rename them using, oh, find and replace, which stays the same here. And since I already have everything set correctly, I just have to replace and it's done. I duplicated this, I'm going to flip it. And then we are going to work on the face rig. Yeah, I noticed now that when I flip it, it's not super symmetrical. Nisha. But it's actually very symmetrical. It's basically it's basically the same. So also it's probably just these two that are that. Uh, it looks symmetrical from afar and also no human or animal or anything. It's actually perfectly symmetrical, so that makes it more alive, I guess. In any case, uh, so I was flipping this. Let's complete the flipping. I'm going to select the spoon here, the arm holder, and copy its position. Then I'm going to undo what I just did and paste it. It's lovely. <laughs> it's I forgot I have to actually copy the position of the other bones as well. So let's do that once again. This 2 minus 1. And then I'm going to copy the position of all these bones. Now, if I select 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, and copy them, I can copy them all at once, saving a lot of time. The only problem with that is that I have to remember the order in which I selected them. So I hope this is it. I inverted them, of course I inverted them. Okay, let's do it again. So minus one, 
I just select these two so I already get confused. And then I unflip this, the root, by going back. And then I paste. Okay, so I'm only reading this this way because I get confused. But if you manage to have a better memory than me, you are absolutely welcome to um, do this directly instead. So one, two, three. Fantastic. So I'll re replicate this very quickly. Now, since I can't trust anything anymore and nothing is actually symmetrical, I'm going to redo this very quickly. We are lucky when we have such characters because they are very easy to make. Now a bit more up. And then I'm going to create some more vertices. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to bind this here. So I'm going to change the weights. And of course I'm going to smooth it all the way. Oh, I forgot one. No, be selected. Now I'm going to go back to setup mode. Activate the wireframe for this. Deactivate for this. And I'll go and recreate this leaf very quickly. Cool. Now I guess I need to add one here to make it very, very similar. So I'm going to select this here, here, these four bones, and then I'm going to weight this so that it follows. Um, so for sure these are going to be weighted to all arm. Why can I? Aha, uh -huh. okay. I select them and all arm happens. Then arm holder should hold this one too. And then we have the problem here and we have to recreate the IK constraint for this shoulder here. That's going to be very quick. So I'm going to select these two new IK constraint. I select this shoulder. Okay. Okay. So I unchecked positive from here so that it's following the correct direction of the shoulder. I have to update the bindings because I changed the position of these bones since I added them and then I just have to wait this. So for now I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay, so I'm, I'll go with the assumption that this is going to be moved all at once and that we want the people to be here and then I'm going to make the people perfect pixel perfect then I'm going to rename this bone to effects or just effect and then I'm going to parent all these images that we have here to this effect bone nice Okay, what's missing? Let's see. I am forgetting something. I don't remember what I am forgetting because that's the point of forgetting. Oh, the eyebrow. Okay, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, the eyebrow. Oh, in sync. <laughs> I'm going to duplicate this eyebrow. Then I'm going to rename it using the usual system. I love this, that's so convenient. And then I'm going to delete this image that I have here duplicated. Then I'm going to flip the face. It's great that you were paying attention. And then I'm going to copy the position of this, undo the flipping, and I'm going to paste it. Perfect! Now I can just repair in the eyebrow to the correct bone. And it's done! That was quick and easy, wasn't it? I hope you also managed to replicate this in case you were following along. So for the head control, so if you already followed some other tutorials um, or watched other uh, Twitch streams, you are probably already familiar with the uh, 3D moving face. It relies on a 
transform constraint that has a negative value so that a bone mimics another bone going in exactly the opposite direction at the same speed. Um, we are going to recreate that setup now on the little pug face. Remember, this is a dog, this is not a rabbit. Let's create the uh, setup for the head. We start by creating a new bone. We could actually reuse this little bone that we have here on the nose. So I already have this bone here. I'm going to create a bone that will be controlling the, the face in the opposite direction. I'm going to place it wherever I want, just so that it's printed under the head. So for now here, and then I'm going to set the translation to zero so it's centered. Oh, uh, maybe here, but I'm going to change the icon so that I remember not to click this. I'm also going to change it to red so it looks like a don't touch it sign. And I'll lower the opacity of this too so it's less prominent. It makes you want to quick click it a, li a little less. I want to also lower the opacity of this one here. Okay, I see they are similar. And now uh, we are going to set that uh, constraint. So let's proceed and create the constraint that will move our head in a 3D-ish way. I'm going to select the back of the head control, which I'm going to rename to head inverse. Then I'm going to uh, create a new transform constraint and select the uh, nose bone, which I'm going and I'm going to rename this con transform constraint to um, head control. Now, the first thing I want to do is to match the position of this bone so that it doesn't move when I change the mixing influence here. Then I'm going to set it to minus 100. And now that we're done, if I go in animate mode, the only place where we want to edit the position of our things, yes, it worked. So since this worked, now this isn't very 3D-ish, but we are going to fix it by creating a couple more meshes. The first one is going to be the one of the head, because this lovely pug, is it a pug? French bulldog? I'm not sure. Uh, because this lovely dog um, has this lovely little line that goes across his face, so we're going to need a mesh to uh, help simulate the various the features following that. So I'm going to create a new mesh, or perhaps I'll trace it, and that's good. That's good for me. Yeah, I'm going to accept it. I'm just maybe gonna remove this vertex here and this one, so that I can instead make sure that this is on the border and this too. Nice, it saved me a couple minutes. So we created the outer hull, and I'm going to create some more vertices. Now, if we want it to retain its spherical shape, we want to avoid just placing a, a vertex here in the middle, and instead we want to distribute the vertices around um, to better simulate that this front part is a bit more flat. Basically what I want to do is make a second circle on the inside and I'll create maybe two of these, like this, following the idea that I just explained. This way I can more or less preserve the border as well as get a rather realistic uh, shape. I'm enlarging this a bit because here it's supposed to have its uh, face, its mouth, so it's not that important. What's important is that the vertices that are touching the, the muzzle here are more or less similar, placed close to it, so that it's easier to set the same weights for them. So 
So I'm trying to make a symmetrical structure now. I decided to just delete those since they're not gonna be seen. Nice, let's try this shape first. So what we want to do is bind this, um, this shape to both the back and the front um, bones, so head inverse and nose. We also want to have the nose first uh, because the bone that is upper in the list is going to also be placed in front of the other if two parts of the mesh overlap. It shouldn't be the case with the face, but one never knows. And this is the horrible result that we get the moment we try to test this in animate mode. Just for your view and pleasure, this is wrong, but we are going to make it correct very soon. So the first rule to get this correct is to set uh, the whole mesh to a neutral state. So we give it a bit of an influence of nose and then we set the influence of the two bones on the vertices to 50 and 50 so that it stays in place no matter how we move the bones because one will um, eliminate um, the influence of the other. So next we create a fake turning animation. So we move this bone, for example, here, then we key so that we can make a nice loop. In the middle, we're going to place it on the opposite side. Here we're going to place it up and here we're going to place it down. So it ends like this. We have our little turning animation and now we have to make this texture follow it. Now, an easy way to do this is to select all the inside circle that we made and that's why making a an inside circle first is useful. Oh, I created a vertex here that I didn't create on the other side. But never mind. And we slightly, slightly change the influence so that it follows the head more and more. I usually a 60 is fine. 65, I don't know. Okay. And we also get this outer part here to follow the head a bit more, but at a slower pace. Okay, so we get that spherical effect. This maybe wouldn't have required that much on inverse control specifically, but perhaps we're going to need it in other directions. Uh, I did it out of habit. Or we are going to maybe need it on the ears instead. That's a possibility. So. Uh, what we are going to do next is to turn the eye whites into meshes. Now these are going to be simple meshes, likely, because they are curved and uh, we don't particularly need to distort them. If I'm going to do this, they are going to stop following the eye and they are going to follow the head instead. So now it's a moment to take a decision. And this decision is, should I add another control so that it follows, uh, the, so that it controls all these little bones that I have here at a slower pace? And I think the answer is yes. So I'm going to create an additional bone that will control the facial features that I have here uh, all at once. So let's do that. I'll go create. I select the head. I'm basically redoing what I did with the dudes. Then I create a new bone. I'm going to call it features holder. I'm trying to use descriptive names, but you could call it however you please. Let's translate it a bit down. And I'm going to change the icon to a gear, I'm also going to change it to red. I'm going to pattern them all to this little gear here so that when I move this little gear, they are going to follow. Oh, I forgot to pattern this one. Now that I have the little gear, I'm going to create a new transform constraint that follows the nose again. And I'm going to call it features holder. 
I'm going to match the position because I don't want it to move from where it is and set the translation to whatever is this number so it's going to follow the nose by 59% yeah so I go here and I change this to 66% should be good so if I move here this that's still going out a bit but it's going to make sense very soon <laughs> so I think this was too much we don't want it that much perhaps this is more reasonable so a 21% that's the other number so instead of this very long 60 it's going to become 21 beautiful <laughs> now we are going to change the weights of this okay so that they follow a bit more the head oh that's 59 again i wonder if it's going to be all right we're going to use this number for now <laughs> it's the wrong number i got it inversed 59 oh it looks already much better already more believable we'll likely need to also apply this effect to the back of the ears I'll likely parent the ears to a separate control to change their position on the skull, but I'm not sure yet. So um, another thing that we definitely need to do is create a structure for the muzzle, which is going to truly uh, sell for us the uh, fake 3D effect on the face. This was the easy part. Let's create a mesh for this. And I guess this upper part is not going to move on its own. Can't be sure though. So for now I'm going to parent it there, but if Sinisha requires me, I'll separate it. I'll see. So I'll edit the mesh and create a new mesh. Almost okay. I can draw a straight line from here or I could go inside. Let's go inside. So it's important that wherever you place your vertices, you try to stay uh, symmetrical so that when you assign the vertices, uh, when you assign the weights on these vertices, you can assign them in similar, um, you can select them both at the same time and assign them similar weights. So I'm going to add, no, I didn't. I keep forgetting that I'm going to create some more vertices and uh, let's focus here on the, how this muzzle should be to make it pop out. So first, uh, one of the lessons of creating meshes is we place the vertices at the sides of the main features. So this little nose is for sure going to get these four vertices. Now, it doesn't have to be super, super precise, like in this case, but you get the gist. Now, then the muzzle, I expect this part, like, to, to be a bit more outward, this, and this be attached more. So, for, to achieve that, I'm going to place a vertex here, for sure, so I can control this part separately. And likely one here. I'm going to test if this is enough or if I need to add more controls because perhaps this just this alone may work let's see if this works I'm going to be very happy if it doesn't I'm going to add more vertices and uh, you can say that I try so let's bind this to the nose and the inverse control nice and then I'm going to set the weights so that it follows Um, first of all, I need to set them all so that they uh, so that this looks attached to the skull. So it's going to be this value again. Yeah, it makes it feel attached. That's very nice. And then I'm going to set it so that the the rest pops out a little bit more. Then after everything starts falling in place, you notice that. Um, some weights could be adjusted a bit better. For example, these features here, they seem to be moving a bit too much now. So 
I may actually adjust the influence of it to 19 let's try 19 so it's just a little bit less in any case now let's simulate the depth by selecting the vertices that for sure are going to stick out the most which are these ones that i just selected well i need to have the courage to to add the most influence on this that's cute also this part here is going to require a bit more influence from here so it sticks out a bit more oh so cute I'm going to also rig uh, the mouth that it's floating so much, it's driving me crazy now. So new mesh, edit mesh, new. Okay, so this is going to need to be able to open the mouth. Okay, I created a basic, the outer hull here. Let me isolate here. I'm going to create a double border because this part here, I'm afraid that could get too distorted otherwise. And I'm also going to add a couple more vertices here so that I can have a part that is attached and a part that sticks out more. So now I'm going to uh, first bind these to the two bones and likely later I'm going to add a specific control. Uh, why do it later when I can do it now? So I'm going to create a little bone under the nose that will control the uh, mouth opening and so I'm going to call Joe uh, Joe cool then I'm going to place it exactly in the middle okay it is parented to the correct thing so now I can use this to bind it to the jaw and to the inverse control so first I set the weights to 50% and then I change it so that it more or less matches. Okay, so this part here really can't have all the same weight. So despite this part be being right, I'm going to actually have to add not just the influence of this bone here, but also the influence of the main nose control because there's some parts of the mouth that I don't want to move. So I'm going to add that in. Find nose. Now I'll change the weights once again. So I'm going to remove all influence of the jaw and replace it with the nose while I can do it. <laughs> and we have these scary insides of the mouth floating around like it's nothing. Uh, now, if I uh, want to test this, if it's working or not, I'm going to have to try to open the jaw by lowering it this way oh that's nice that's cute it's kind of working so i leave it open like this set it on frame one and then i test the rotation while in this state so i want this part here to be influenced more by the jaw so i'm going to raise the influence now like this and then this part here like this yeah, I want to avoid to do it too much because then it would not read it well. And you see that when you place the vertices in a good position, they are kind of falling in place in any case. Okay, and I'm very slowly changing the weights. I think I'm going to reduce the influence of the jaw here it's sticking out a bit too much for my taste and now it's a bit too few <laughs> okay so you see that i keep selecting the vertices that are uh, in symmetrical positions that are supposed to have the same weights together okay now i'm going to give these two vertices especially different weights so that this part can stick out a bit more but does it stick out it's hard to tell i'm going to deactivate the bones visibility mm, this seems too strong still too strong yeah now let's complete this since we have like two more minutes 
till the end of the stream and then it's gonna be done so i'm going to create a mesh for this bind this to the actually maybe i don't this is the mouth yes uh i'll try to just pattern this mouth to this gear here and while we're at it also the, 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 the little teeth that i saw oh there they are okay i forgot where they were and i'm going to pattern them to the jaw let's see now that is very scary and that's absolutely not what i meant for the poor teeth so i'll turn the teeth into meshes now right now edit mesh no okay i'll bind it to the teeth to the jaw but also to the inverse control yes and then i'll change the weights so that this thing can stay rightfully inside the mouth at the right amount of influence okay so we got already a nice looking head it would feel more solid if we added a control also for the ears but i guess that's gonna be for next time since our time is up i'm going to see you in a week at the same time um thanks for staying on the stream until now i'll upload this video shortly as soon as i can uh you'll be able to find the downloads for this uh, stream in the uh, description of the video and uh, see you next time i hope you enjoyed i sure did so thank you very much you are wonderful just now you are lovely thank you so much for joining the stream